the Toyota Lacrosse Game of the Week. The Syracuse University Orangemen versus the Loyola College Greyhounds. Well, each week we present the best in college lacrosse here on Two Sports. Today we have the best. Defending national champion Syracuse has come south to Baltimore to take on the Loyola Greyhounds. Hi, everybody. Scott Garceau along with Keith Mills and Quint Kesnick. Keith, uh, Syracuse, one blemish on their record this year, a tough one-goal loss to Hopkins under the dome. Yeah, but they bounced back. Scott beat Princeton and beaten Brown, the, the team that all Baltimore loves to hate, kind of like the Yankees <laughs> of uh, lacrosse. Say what you want about them. You may hate them, but they are still the nation's best lacrosse team until they're unseated later in May, and that will be very difficult for anyone to do. And they make it a habit of going to the Final Four and winning a lot of national champions. Quint Kesnick has competed against the Syracuse Orange. Tell us about this team, Quint. Well, this is a team that's made 18 straight Final Four. The road show, they bring their swagger, their flash and finesse here to Curley Field. The offense led by Josh Coffin, the junior from Carthage, New York, so talented with the ball in his stick. Last year, 24 goals, 25 assists. Second team All-American last year. Uh, six and three, six goals, three assists, and three games versus Loyola College. He's one of the primary ball handlers with Mike Powell. There's a good look at Kaufman, 14 goals and seven assists. When Rob Mulligan has started the last two NCAA championship games, a lot of experience. Uh, a lot of experience, a lot of poise, and a lot of leadership vocally for the Orange. Uh, the left-hander, the senior from Farmingdale, New York, 68 saves on the season, only 35 goals against. Great percentage, 66%. Syracuse has only given up six goals per game. Mulligan with the experience the flash, the finesse, uh, just easy to complete package as far as goalies are concerned. All right, over on the Loyola side, Keith Steven Brundage, a top recruit, a freshman, looking to spice up that offense a little. Yes, yeah, Scott, offense hasn't been a problem so far for Dave Cottle's Greyhounds, and Steven Brundage is a big reason why. The one that got away from Syracuse. He's from West Genesee High School in Syracuse, New York. He came down here this year. He's a freshman. He had three goals last week against Towson, and he's really provided a spark for the offense. As we said, Scott, the offense, not a problem problem the last couple of weeks. 14 goals last week against Towson. Still wasn't good enough to win. Yeah, you're right, Keith. You were here last week. They gave up 19. They need better play on defense and between the pipes. Have to have a better game from their goalie today. Jason Bourne was target practice last week by the uh, Towson Tigers. Uh, he, we'll see how long Jason Bourne plays in this game. Uh, Mark Bloomquist, his backup, but Jason will start. 45% save ratio. He's given up 10 goals a game, 19 goals last week against Towson. All right, there you have some of the top players in the Syracuse Loyola Showdown. Back to take a look at the starting lineups right after this. The Toyota Lacrosse Game of the Week. Brought to you by Toyota, the right one for you. Wells Discount Liquors. Visit Wells for all your entertaining needs. Union Memorial Sports Medicine, outstanding in the field. And Bud Light. Make it a Bud Light. Toyota has it all. Better quality, better value, and all the right choices. Starting with one of the lowest priced cars in America. Toyota, the right one for you. Strength, innovation, and STX. Three words synonymous for the fastest game and finest gear. And you can find it all at Lax World, the lacrosse superstore. From sticks to pads to apparel, we've got you covered. The X2, SDX's most technologically advanced stick ever. The Igniter Glove with its game-ready palmless feel. The Exo and Apollo pads, designed with maximum protection and flexibility. You see, whether you're the best in the world or just starting out, Lax World has the SDX gear that best suits you. Maryland, women's lacrosse, next Saturday at 5 on 2 Sports. It is number one Syracuse against number 10 Loyola. We're at Evergreen today, and let's take a look at our SunTrust starting lineups. Quint for Syracuse. Well, Syracuse has got a tremendous starting offensive group. Uh, Liam Banks from Ward Melville, he's approaching the 100-point milestone. Mike Springer, the stealth bomber, 40 shots, 14 goals. And Mike Powell, the freshman from Carthage, averaging nearly five points per game. The midfield, these guys are big, strong, and athletic. Spencer Wright, six foot three from San Diego. Brian Soliday and Josh Kaufman. The defense, physical, they like to get out and play 
a tight man-to-man -man defense. Billy St. George from Baldwin, New York. John Glatzel from Boys Latin, potential defenseman of the year. And Solomon Bliss, 6'3", 215 pounds. In the Nets, Rob Mulligan, 341 minutes, 68 saves, and only 35 goals against. But how about momentum in this game? Loyola struggle. They've lost two out of their last three at home. Syracuse, of course, playing like champions. Yeah, Syracuse is coming off a great victory against Brown uh, last week. They won 15 to, uh, 15 to 4. Their goalie only had to make six saves. Uh, Mulligan was in the Nets. He played the first 45 minutes. They led 7 to nothing. Now, that's a Brown team that Loyola struggled with. So if you compare scores, Syracuse should be a pretty strong favorite here today. Well, we saw a Virginia team that was kind of on the ropes knock off Hopkins. So uh, you never know what's going to happen. When we look at Dave Cottle's lineup, Keith, uh, you've talked about it. Offense has been okay. They need some defense. They need some defense. They get a big defenseman back in Billy Armstrong. Well, let's take a look at the starting lineup now for Dave Cottle's Greyhounds. Familiar attack, Gunnar Gettleman, number 10, sophomore Chris Summers from St. Mary's in Annapolis, and that good-looking freshman we just talked about, Stephen Brunton. First team midfield is very athletic, Bobby Horsey, number four, the senior from Westchester, Pennsylvania. Gavin Prout, 17 goals already. He's having a big year. He's a senior from Whitby, Ontario, and junior Michael Sullivan, number 49, from Abington, Pennsylvania. On defense, as we mentioned, Billy Armstrong re re uh, returns to the starting lineup. He's been bothered by illness. John Brasco is a junior from Springfield, Pennsylvania, Armstrong and number 43, All-American Dave Metz, a senior from West Genesee High School, the same high school that produced Stephen Brundage, and Jason Bourne, the senior from Mount St. Joe in Catonville in the Nets. All right, time now for our keys to this game. What do you have the Baltimore County Savings Bank keys of the game, Quinn? Well, uh, to start with uh, Syracuse University, their face-off specialist, Chris Searcy, he's got to be dealt with. He's second in the entire country, 67%. He won 15 of 16 against Brown last week. Secondly, for Syracuse, Number 22, that's Mike Powell. The legacy of the number 22 continues. It started back in 1988 with Gary Gate, passed on to Charlie Lockwood, Ryan Casey, and now Mike Powell all have worn that great number for that program. For Loyola College, the goaltending, it's been an empty net. Look at the save percentages, 45 and 45 for the two Loyola goalies compared to 66% for Syracuse. And finally, the specialty situations have not been really effective for Loyola College, especially their extra man defense. Opponents are scoring nearly, nearly 42 percent uh, against the Loyola uh, defense. All right, there you have it. We've talked about it. Now it's time to do it. Syracuse and Loyola coming up next on our Game of the Week. You see the series, Syracuse has won 12 of 15, and last year under the Dome, Syracuse a 16-9 winner. And uh, Quint touched on it in his pregame. Chris Searcy, uh, one of the top face-off uh, men, uh, second in the nation this year, led the nation last year, and he can just dominate a game. He can, second in the country, won 15 out of 16 last week against Brown. Two keys for Loyola have got to be the face-offs and the goaltending. You must be strong up the middle of the field. Jason Bourne and Radonis. And a oh, great hustle. Yeah. And finally controlled by the Greyhounds. Loyola in the gray with the green trim. Syracuse, the orange men in what else but orange. And here come the Greyhounds. First time all year, Loyola has really been a pronounced underdog, and you can see the emotion that they're bringing to all the little plays. Remember when we covered their game against Notre Dame? They're expected to win that game. Yeah. Last week against Towson, they're expected to win. So this is kind of a different opportunity for this group. What would the Q line be on it on this game? Syracuse would be favored by about five goals. Okay. And Loyola will retain possession, hustling after Chris Summers, the sophomore from Annapolis. 
Summers behind the goal to Gunnar Gettleman. Gettleman, Summers, and Brundage, who Keith talked about in our pregame show. Brundage, the freshman, top recruit. Syracuse is covering Gavin Pratt with Dan Stesson, the short stick, number four. And Stesson's kind of extending his defense, trying to shut Pratt off. This is really a, a, an interesting technique. I don't, I don't understand why Syracuse is playing Gavin Pratt with a short stick. Short stick, unless they think that uh, the short stick athletically can match up with them. Pratt passing out front, and it's taken by the long stick. Syracuse with a bounce pass as they try to clear. And this one picked off right into the Bobby Horsey with a shot on goal and Mulligan with the easy save there. Interesting decision by Horsey that time. Looked like he had more room to run towards the goal. Billy St. George with a shot. Just missed. St. George, the junior from Baldwin, New York, third year starter. That's the style of Syracuse. They've, they've reined it in a bit this year. They're not as much of an up-tempo fast break team as they have been in the past. But certainly, if you want to play that style, you're probably not, that's probably not going to be in your best interest. Yeah. Horsey should have pulled that out. Either shoot it right away before Mulligan gets set or pull it out. Yeah. Syracuse a year ago averaged 15 goals a game. This year they're at about 12.8 per game, so a little less production offensively. But they are young, that front line. Powell, a freshman, Springer, a sophomore. Banks is the junior. First midfield, three juniors there, so they, they've got everybody coming back just about. And they lost some quality players, Scott. They lost Marshall Abrams, Matt Cayone, Devin D'Arcangelo. It's like, it just how many ways can you reload? Yeah. yeah, Timmy Burns. But they have some athletes down on the field before the game. You oh. have to say this is the biggest lacrosse team I've ever seen. And not only at the defensive end, this is a team that has some real big and strong offensive players. Michael Powell gave it up, a good shot and a nice save by Jason Bourne. That was a bullet, and Bourne went up high to get it. Michael Springer, the stealth bomber, above 100 miles an hour with that shot. Oh, great pass. And there's a shot and a score. They don't stop him this time. Spencer Wright from the right side takes the pass and puts Syracuse on top at the 12-14 mark, 1-0 Orange. Spencer Wright's sixth goal this season, the assist from Josh Kopp and the great save by Jason Bourne. You gotta feel bad for Mott Springer. Six foot three, jump shot. That ball is absolutely moving. A great save, but Loyola can't clear the ball. Syracuse regains possession, and Kaufman, who we featured in our open near side, is Spencer Wright from San Diego, California, and he pings the far corner. The orange up one nothing. Give them a, that's a hustling play right there. Get the ball off the ground, move it to your open teammate, and convert your shot. And Cersei wins the draw. Orange trying to hustle it up. That's Matt Bontatis. This is where they're so tough, Scott. They, they score, they get the face off, and they're back putting pressure on you one more time. It's like that basketball team gets the hoop and puts the full court yeah. on you, right? If you're not scoring, it's not quite as easy to keep coming after you, but you control the face-offs with Cersei, and you're right back in an offensive mode. Cersei, last year, lived and died by one of his wingers, Sam Bassett. And this year, it's uh, Vontaitis, who's on the wing. Big, tall, number 11, comes in and gets a ton of ground balls. When you say tall, you mean it. 6'5", 198 is Matt Vontaitis. And those long arms really help him on the ground balls. He's got that great wingspan. He can shield off his, his man, use that one-hand scoop, and he's got great speed coming in on the wing. Gavin Pratt, you're looking at number six. He is uh, the prime force in the Loyola offense. Here come the Greyhounds. one nothing Syracuse just underway. And a pass that uh, Gunnar Gettleman can't handle and a turnover for the Greyhounds. Those are the transitions, Keith, that we saw yeah. last week against Towson, early in the game especially, where they just were a little jittery, Loyola, and they turned it over five or six times in the first quarter. I think we mentioned unforced okay. errors, and they had a few of them last week, and that's their first one today. Tell us about Michael Powell, Quint. Uh, great family tradition at Syracuse, his brothers superstars and looks like he's headed in the same direction. Only a freshman. Quickness, the name of his game, and vision and creativity. The guys like Allen Iverson with a lacrosse stick. It's extremely difficult to cover one-on-one. -on -one. I'm surprised that he's really not handling the ball that much so far. Played back behind the goal. Liam Banks gives it up. Up top, Janice Kevich. Ball knocked loose. Scramble for it and crop up with it. Spinning out of a double team. Oh, great, uh, good effort by Prout. But like you said, Scott, they converge quickly, athletically, very, very quick to the ball. 
But a good defensive stand that time. Interesting to see Quinn Syracuse's offense. Series of screens, series of screen and rolls, always looking for the cutter. But then again, always looking to come off the screen, it looks like, and wing that shot. The primary goal scorers are on the attack. Powell, Springer, Banks, and Kaufman. Powell and, and Kaufman will switch from attack to midfield, so it's tough sometimes to really put a, a label on those guys. And there's a turnover, and Loyola will get it back. Solomon Bliss, number 33, and the Orange, 6'3", 215. Another guy who <laughs> they got line back could start on line. many. Uh, a lot of these guys did play high school basketball in their high schools, and it's easy to see why. There is a huge discrepancy between the two physical uh, the two teams, teams yeah, here. Especially huge. when Syracuse is on offense, because Loyola's defense is, is one of the uh, more small units yep. in the country. Yeah. I mean, Brasco's only about 5'10". England is small. Two 180s and a 175 on the Loyola defense. So you're talking about matching up with guys 210, 215. They're giving up some height and size. This is Horsey with it. And guys, look how spread out the uh, Loyola offense is very, a lot of space in the middle of the field. Now they bunch up a little bit. Michael Sullivan behind the goal. Loyola only one shot in the first five minutes of this game. Sullivan up top. Gentleman had trouble with the handle, and Syracuse I think, knocks it free. I think Glatzer got his stick on that. He's already picked off one. Little shovel pass and a nice one. Backside, Danny! Looked out front, and they can't. Oh, oh what a big hit by Bliss. Oh, from behind. Gonna Bliss is going to get. Yeah, Bliss is going to serve some time. From behind, the official on the far side. Oh, Butch West. That was on uh, Stephen Brundage, number 29. He took a shot. <laughs> Brundage unable to convert. Actually, a great feed from Chris Summers there, guys. And they had a real good scoring chance. Brundage unable to convert. Loyola's extra man, about 32% on the season. 12 of 38. So they go to work with 9.42 left. Man advantage with Syracuse on top, one to nothing. And I'm sure Dave Cottle spent some time this week in practice on his extra man. As you said, Quinn, both offense and defensive units. Syracuse's games are televised up in Central New York. I'm sure Coach Cottle got a copy of a lot of their games, analyzed the uh, man down defense for the Orange, figured out maybe a weakness. Let's see what he shows here. Or seeing Tempone play catch. Had a chance to see the Hopkins Syracuse game on tape locally a couple of weeks ago. Oh, great game. Very physical game. Can't connect on the pass out front to Tempone. Horsey hustles after it. Oh, great feed. Great pass and prop finishes. Sullivan to Prout. And the Greyhounds tie it on the extra man goal. Sullivan to Prout. The great backside look division of Michael Sullivan. Here he is, he comes up with a loose ball on the far side. He sees Pratt perched on the crease. The backside defense not there for the orange, nothing. Rob Mulligan, Syracuse's goalie, could do. Look at the pass, oh. accuracy, and the footwork by Pratt gives himself an angle. He's patient, and he finishes. Nice look between Sullivan and Pratt. Those two work together. What a great duo they are, working yeah. off each other's strength, uh, strengths. 18th goal this year for Gavin Pratt. Back to the X. Cersei and Radonis battle it out. And Chris Cersei, who led the nation last year, there's, wins the draw. Scott, Cersei. there's Prout battling for the ball there. We saw him with a steal on defense. We saw him with a goal. Very active already. And Loyola with an opportunity here. The lock. Oh. Shot and a score. Mike Stromberg with a one-hopper pass Mulligan. And the Loyola bench explodes. The Greyhounds take a 2-1 lead. Stromberg's first goal the season he's taken four shots now the bounce shot beats Mulligan off of the face off they triggered up top Summers to Stromberg the bounce shot top shelf beats Mulligan the Greyhounds are fired up only 18 seconds apart those two goals it's a 2-1 Loyola lead we'll step out back right after this Trucks. Toyota has it all. Award-winning, compact, and full-size trucks. Tough, dependable, and including one of the most affordable trucks sold in America. Toyota, the right one for you. 
If you're a high school student who wants to make an ordinary summer extraordinary, think Johns Hopkins University pre-college program. Earn college credits in writing, science, art, government, computer programming, math, and much more from one of the top universities in America. Meet students from around the world and experience college life all before you graduate from high school. This summer, don't think camp. Think college. Think Johns Hopkins University pre-college programs. Call 410-516-4548 or visit our website at www.jhu.edu slash summer. Well, it's early, but Keith and Quinn, I guess Dave Cottle got to be happy. His team has jumped on top 2-1 here, playing with some emotion. Yeah, I think he likes the pace of the game so far. It's, it's not end-to-end. -end. It's somewhat slow, and here comes Loyola again. Crowd inside. Boy, Summer's a little too anxious on that one, guys. I'll be right back. Orange ball. Cersei has not been the dominator that we predicted. Radonis holding tough. Loyola's problem all year has not been the offense. Yeah. Let me tell you, this is a team who can score goals. Yes. Great passing team. A streaky shooting team. The problem has been the defense. They're giving up more than 10 goals a game. And prior to last week, though, Quint, their even up defense was solid. It was their extra man. But last week, all facets of the defense broke down. There's a shot and a score. Dropping down low and firing home with a bullet. Mike Number Powell. 22, Mike Powell. That's the freshman Quinn talked about. That's his 13th goal and 30th point of the season. The assist from number nine, Soliday. He just lifts Bourne, na nails the inside corner. He took the same shot against Hopkins, against the left-hander Rob Scherer. This time he drops his entire body, drops his stick. The goalie gets down low, anticipating the low shot, and the elevator shot just nails the upper corner. A sizzler from Mike Powell, only a freshman. Talked about how dangerous he is with the ball. There he shows uh, some real good velocity yeah, in that shot. Yeah. You talked to, Scotty, I'm sorry, you talked a long time. Fans of lacrosse who go to a lot of Final Fours, and they'll tell you they remember seeing Michael Powell as a young kid throwing the ball up against the wall while his brothers are playing in tournaments and just lived with a stick since he's in, old enough to carry one. Liam Banks looking over the defense. Liam Banks is the Gavin Prout of the Syracuse offense. Here's a guy who makes all the right plays, unselfish, smart, understands tempo, really plays off of his teammates' strengths so well. Only a junior, seems like he's been there forever. From Ward Melville in New York. There's Powell again looking for the opening. Good defense and the pass to Soliday, not loose, and here come the Greyhounds. Prout up with it. Coming in the hurry now. Slows the pace down and they'll set the offense. Yeah, good transition defense that time by Syracuse. But again, good defensive stand from Loyola. Proud seems to be involved, Quinn, in a lot of different things so far. Today. Oh, yeah, they have to watch his, his conditioning. I thought against Towson last week, he kind of tired. They're asking him to do an awful lot. Yes. Playing midfield, playing attack, playing extra man, clearing the ball. And when you have a team like Syracuse, Scott, who throws a lot of guys out at you, they can wear you down. Deep depth. Gunner Gentleman had a light rain falling here on the turf. The Astro Turf Field here, Curly Field. Both of these teams are turf teams. Of course, Syracuse plays in the dome, the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. You're looking at Michael Sullivan, the junior from Abington, Pennsylvania. Oh, got a pick from Horson. He got. Team rolled by Brian Soliday and the penalty marker down. And Soliday takes a nap right there and it almost cost him, Quint. Soliday, Soliday looked at the official heads up play by Sullivan, nearly got his team a goal. You, you talk about the size and strength of the Syracuse team. Watch the pick here, Watch Soliday drop his shoulder, sees the pick, leans into Horsey. Horsey is a strong, he's an ox, and he just uh, takes that pick. This is a foul right here. Soliday runs into the pick and shoves Horsey to the turf. And, and if we keep rolling this, you'll see eventually what you said, Keith. Yeah. It's interesting. Solid turned to the official. Like, what? What are you doing? And, and a second time, though, Quint, that Loyola has missed a chance on the doorstep because it looks like they're a little anxious to convert. That time it was Bobby Horsey trying to pull the trigger just a bit early. Well, the extra man, the great equalizer in this game. Loyola cashed in the first time they had the man advantage. And now they'll try to break a 2 2 tie. Watch your corner, watch your corner, so. Inside, shot to score Sullivan. Nice fake as he moved to the middle and found the opening and beat Rob Mulligan. And the Greyhounds cash in on their second extra man goal. Sullivan from Horsey, a great catch. This pass is absolutely moving. Look at Horsey, he guns it in. Look at the catch, it's down by his knees, catches it, seals the defender, comes in and beats the left handed Mulligan. Watch the catch, the ball's down low, makes it. 
senses the defense, protects his stick, and comes in. Sullivan having a terrific game so far with one assist and one goal. It could have had another assist to Horsey a few minutes ago. So, Loyola, Dave Cottle has to be happy with his team's focus. Got a violation there on the faceoff, so Loyola with possession. And so far, Ryan Radonis holding his own. Last yep. week, he was torched by Justin Berry of Towson, but today he's three for three against the best in the country. And Cersei's coming off a game where he won 15 of 16 draws against Loyola last year. He won 19 of 28. Point of emphasis for this Loyola team is to possess the ball on offense, work it around for 30 or 45 seconds, then attack. They feel the Syracuse defense will foul them. Yeah. So far we have seen that. And they know they can convert on extra man. So things going to plan uh, for Coach Cottle, Coach Nemi, Coach Blatchley, and Coach Charlie Toomey on the Loyola sideline. Five and a half minutes left first quarter. Loyola leads Syracuse 3-2. Last five shots in the game, we've had five goals, three by Loyola and two by Syracuse. Sullivan working in some heavy traffic, and not a good pass there. Yeah, not a wise Nobody decision home. at all. Syracuse will come out with their second midfield line, Bill Parrott, Steve Vallone. You see Charlie Sean Toomey. Sean Lindsay, freshman. I'm, so, I'm sorry, Quincy okay. Charlie Toomey, former goaltender here, former coach at the Severn School in this Verna Park area. I guess you're all in the same fraternity, right? Goaltenders, uh, Goaltenders love of America. It's, uh, yeah, <laughs> the Shepherd Pratt. That's uh, <laughs> where our meetings are. <laughs> Guys still twitching, right? <laughs> Is it true when you drive down the road, you instinctively put your arm up in front of the windshield? <laughs> This is Parrott. Back to Banks. Liam Banks, tight defense on him, and he throws it away. So back-to-back -back turnovers, very similar. Just kind of forced passes with nobody home. And now Loyola get it back. Got a timeout down on the field. 4.35 left in the first quarter. Loyola on top, 3-2. When it comes to the most intense sport played on two feet, don't be left out in the cold. InsideLacrosse.com, Face Off Yearbook, USLaxCamps.com, and Inside Lacrosse Magazine, where coaches, players, and fans turn when knowledge is the name of the game. Introducing Instant Vision Cataract Surgery. No stitches, no patch, no painful anesthesia. And best of all, you'll be able to walk, drive, and enjoy the benefits of better vision immediately. Instant Vision Cataract Surgery was pioneered by Dr. Sherry Rowan, a board-certified eye surgeon. The office provides free shuttle service. Call 410-332-9500. That's 332-9500. Dr. Sherry Rowan and Instant Vision Cataract Surgery. You'll love what you see. Cars involved in an accident can be replaced, but you can't replace your health. That's why you need the experience and commitment of Science Kirk and Miles at 1-800-LAWYERS. Let's talk about it, because if you have a phone, you have a lawyer. Welcome back. Rain following here at uh, Curley Field, Syracuse and Loyola. Syracuse ranked number one in the land, defending national champs. And uh, Quint, you talked about the, the change of footwear. Change of footwear, Loyola with the Reeboks, changing from the sneakers to the turf shoes. Syracuse, I haven't seen any players changing their shoes. I hope they have turf shoes. I hope they have little nubbies in the bottom of their shoes, or they'll be slipping, because things are going to get pretty slick. Ooh, dangerous pl play there. And Greenhouse Gavin Proud hustles after it, getting worked over oh, by great, the double team. Great play by Banks there, but Proud comes out with it. Interference call against Loyola. Fink, Jimmy Fink. It's a turnover, Syracuse will control. And Michael Powell flips it over to Liam Banks. This is solid, eh? Boy, frustrating there, guys, if you're Dave Cottle. You have the ball, you work on a clear, and, and five seconds into the clear, it breaks down and you lose possession of the ball. Now you're staring into the, uh, the turbocharged offense. They come back out with the first midfield. This is dangerous. Every single guy in this field right now is a threat. This is Kaufman spinning behind the cage. He gets double team. You just saw the Ohio State Johns Hopkins score 1-1 first quarter. Game being played at Homewood. And the ball loose back to midfield. 
big effort. You saw the dive there from the Greyhounds' Billy Armstrong. Syracuse retains possession. Oh, good, good. A penalty. Good aggressiveness, Scott, by the Loyola defense so far. They're double-teaming the ball. They're moving to the ball quick. Challenging all the loose balls in the defensive end. I thought they lost that battle last week against Towson. Towson much quicker with the ground balls. This will be a foul on Stromberg. Watch the swinging of the stick. Number 35 right there to the elbow. Must make contact with either the glove or the stick by rule. And Stromberg will be in the box. Big Mike Springer, the stealth bomber. Fastest shot in college lacrosse. So what are the other guys like? Just F-16s if, he, if he's the uh, stealth bomber? He's the stealth bomber. <laughs> what kind of what kind of speed are you talking, Quint? 100 uh, miles an hour Springer, uh, yeah. with, a, with, a, with a radar gun. Wow. Uh, not in competition. Yeah. This is Michael Powell. Work the perimeter now. Syracuse, the extra man. Last summer with uh, Major League Lacrosse, we had a radar gun out during games, and uh, the highest reading we got was low 90s. Most of the shots okay. were, were upper 80s or low 90s. And who was that? There's a nice save by Jason Bourne. Uh, guys like Mark Millen, Jesse Hubbard, yeah. uh, Casey Powell. Well, you see Bourne grabbing his left shoulder. He took that brunt of that shot. Maybe Ooh. that was only like 85, right? But uh, that catch on the shoulder blade. The lefty Brian Soliday with the shot. Syracuse brings in Brian Knee, the freshman number five with the high socks for extra man situations. Quinn, how about Jason Bourne now? They've struggled between the pipes. He's had a couple of nice saves early oh. in this game. Got a piece of that one. Great help that time from Dave Metz. Boy, he got in the, he got in the shooting lane and really made it a tough shot from Knee. Knee pressed the corner. He tried to turn the corner. Excellent defense, so bodying up, and the shot went wide or born was there but he's shooting nearly 60 percent just in this specialty situation his brother tom also a member of this team both with the boys lap there's Ooh. a shot down low and another save at springer on yeah. the far side drop down on him hit the post low to low Springer, about six foot three, long arms, uses his whole body. See the torque? <laughs> that was a Much missile. like a slap shot in hockey, it's an entire body. The legs, the hips. There's a bouncer that goes wide from Soliday. Teams back to even strength. But I would have to think that Jason Bourne started to feel pretty good about himself after a rough game against Towson. Good point, he's gotten off to a good start. And there's a shot and a goal, a one hopper from Springer with the left hand, and we're tied at three. Springer left handed on the little cut from Mike Powell with the assist off the end line. Syracuse re-triggers, the teams are back to even strength, they get the ball off the end line, and they don't stop playing. There's no resetting, it's all continuous flow, and Powell finds a wide open Mike Springer. It looked like uh, Loyola didn't mark up once the penalty uh, yeah. had released. They never really checked up and called out numbers. I'm using it. Remember last year, guys, at halftime, the game we did up there was 6-3 Loyola at the half, they end up losing 16-9, so Syracuse game capable, a bunch of yeah, cap <laughs> capable of just dominating a game at any time. They scored 10 fourth quarter goals last yeah, year in that game. Yeah. And part of that is Cersei controlling Absolutely. the face-offs and coming right back at you. Oh, 